Hi guys, it's Brad from It's About Time Now. In today's video, we're gonna show you how we set up our 2015 Jeep Wrangler Rubicon for flat towing behind our new RV. Come along with us. Okay. So you have purchased a vehicle that's on the list of recommended vehicles for flat towing. That means the manufacturer has gotten this vehicle ready and it will not suffer any damage to the transmission or other things by towing it with all four wheels down behind your motorhome. So you would think it'd be ready to go, but it's not. So the first thing we had to purchase for our 2015 Wrangler was a base plate. Base plates have numerous manufacturers I just happened to pick one by Rock Jock, which also doubles as a forward skid plate. I removed the forward plate that came on the Jeep and installed this base plate and skid plate assembly in its place. Installation took about two hours. And it also has tow hooks to be used as a base plate behind the motorhome. The next thing you're going to need is a way to activate the Jeep's tail lights when the RV's tail lights come on and brake lights. We purchased a wiring harness, but I went a little bit different route. I did not want to cut or modify the Jeep's harness, so let me show you what I bought. So rather than modify the Jeep's existing wiring system, I took one of Diana's cookie sheets and I cut these little circles out of the cookie sheet bottom. This is made of steel. And then I purchased these LED trailer lights and they sit right on there when the gate is closed. I also modified the harness so that I could unhook these and store them. And the other half of the harness is now located right here. So I just plug these in like you would a boat trailer. The next thing that I did was I took a standard umbilical, you can purchase these. This is a seven way to six way. The seven way goes on the RV and it's already wired for this. So why do I need six? Well, four of these activate the tail light, brake lights and turn signals. The other one, it leads to my battery. This allows the RV to charge the Jeep's battery while I'm towing it. You wondering, why would you need to charge the Jeep's battery while you're towing it? It's a great question. Let me show you what we had to buy next. The last component we had to purchase was a Patriot brake proportioner. This is a small microcomputer that actually sits on the floor of the Jeep and activates the brakes in the Jeep if the motorhome slows down. So you can see that it connects to the brake pedal and rests against the back of the seat. Also, you're required by law in most states to have a breakaway system. This is a breakaway wire. It goes right here, and it connects to a breakaway switch on the front of the Jeep. Okay, so once your brake proportioner is in, here's one of the nice parts about having a Jeep Wrangler. First of all, the steering does not lock, so I don't have to leave the key in here when I'm driving down the road. It will track behind the RV just perfectly. The next thing that you need, and Jeep came with it, is a full-time 12-volt power supply to power this brake proportioner. That's located in the center console, also factory installed from Jeep. Last but not least, you got your breakaway hooked up. You got everything's ready to roll. Let me show you how this proportioner works. So once you're all plugged in, you turn it on, It'll run through a self-test. And then press setup when it's ready. And it will press the brake pedal three times. And if everything's right, it will come up and say, okay. Ready. So now it's ready to tow. And this is an inertia powered brake proportioner. So when it feels the RV slow down, it will activate the brake pedal in the Jeep all by itself independently. Beats the heck out of some of the other options because one, it's portable, I can remove it. And two, I didn't have to cut or modify the Jeep's harness in any way. 
So once you have everything connected and you're ready to get your vehicle ready to tow, follow the manufacturer's recommended instructions in your owner's manual. In this case, my Rubicon is an automatic and it's four wheel drive. Four wheel drive is important on some of your Wranglers because if it's automatic without four wheel drive, you cannot disconnect the transmission and that could cause a problem. So according to my owner's manual, the first thing I should do is start it up, put my foot on the brake, place the transmission in neutral, pull my four wheel drive lever back to the neutral position. Once I've done that, it's recommended that I put it in drive and see if the Jeep will move. It does not. So I'll put it in reverse. Same thing, it won't move. Go back to neutral, turn the key off, then put the transmission in park. And now it's ready to tow. What's actually happening is my transfer case is now in neutral and that disconnects the transmission from the drive axles. Therefore, they can roll independently. And among other things, it will keep me from putting miles on the Jeep while it's being towed behind the motor. So when I'm ready to disconnect the Jeep, what I do is I start it up, cover the brake, place the transmission in neutral, move my four-wheel drive lever forward back to two-wheel drive, and check to make sure I have drive, and I do, and I have reverse, and I do, and then just place it back in park and turn it off. Okay guys, that's how I do it for mine. Yours might be a little different. Next up, you have to have your tow bars. I have a Falcon 6000, it's rated for 6,000 pounds. The Jeep only weighs about 4,800, so this fits. I like this one because it has carriers for the safety cables to run through so they're not dangling on the ground. And there's the tow bars. And they clamp to the base plate on the front of the Jeep. Where you're going, you can just lift on this lever. That will release the pressure on the Jeep, allow you to retract the arms. And then they lock in this harness up here and they lay out of the way right there. Okay guys, this video was really designed just to show you what's involved with flat towing a vehicle. Doesn't in any way, shape or form include all of the things you need to know. I am not an expert. I recommend if you are planning on flat towing your vehicle, that you consult the experts at your local RV shops or trailer shops. Someone who has way more knowledge on this than I do. This is just what we do. I hope you enjoyed it. If you're thinking of flat towing your cars, maybe it's answered some questions for you. If you're not planning on flat towing, that's all right too. You guys have an amazing week. We'll see you later.